All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Side Quest, the unofficial podcast of Fitocracy. If you are not following us on Twitter, check us out there. Hit follow. We're at SideQuest FM. If you want to check us out on Instagram as well, you can follow us there, SideQuest FM. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search SideQuest Podcast. You'll find us there. Like us. Share our uh, statuses. Share the episodes that we that I put out on Mondays and Thursdays with your friends. Let them know about us if you're enjoying it. Uh, and again, please head over to iTunes. Hit the subscribe button. Leave us a review. The more reviews we have, the more people will see us and the higher we'll move up the charts. We're still in the what's hot section, but I want to get further up. I want to be on the front page, not a couple clicks down, but we're, we're getting there. Uh, I have some great guests lined up in the next few weeks, but uh, this evening, or for those of you listening at bright and early at 6 a.m. this morning, I have a wonderful guest, guest uh, a, another Canadian uh, Canada, just just churning out the personal fitness trainers, man. They are you. You guys have taken over Hollywood. Like you got the best comedians in the world, in my opinion. Uh, like Saturday Night Live was basically all of like the best Canadian comedians, and and you're churning out some some great personal uh, trainers and fitness experts. Uh, but anyways, I have uh, Allison of BarefootAndFit.com on here with uh, us today. So Allison, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, so how did you get into the fitness world? Um, what What is your story? Well, I started in nutrition, kind of. I was going to be a certified or registered nutritionist. And I started that, and it was pretty much through other than the final exam. And I just didn't feel like that was quite what I wanted to do. I kind of was liking the fitness aspect a lot more. So I just kind of took that and just went with it. So I signed up for my certification course, and then I've just been going from there. Okay. Now I know from reading your site that you have run some marathons, and you're more of a runner. Um, now, just a quick, do you lift, do you do any lifting, or is running really kind of like your, your passion and your forte? Um, I, it was for a while, then with some health issues that actually had to be put to the side, but I had run two half marathons and I still want to do a full marathon. I just have not gotten around to it. Plus with winter here, it lasts about six months. So <laughs> <laughs> it makes a little bit harder to train a lot of the times. Okay. So, so <laughs> I, and I think most of my listeners know, and a few of the guests I've had on, uh, are, we don't like running. <laughs> I like running if there's a basketball involved. That's about it. Um, that's, you're, like, I'm not, I'll sprint occasionally, um, but, yeah, I, I suck at running. Um, so, how did, how do you train for a marathon? Like, I, I honestly want to know, like, is it just, you get up on a Monday and you run five miles on a, on a Tuesday, you run like seven miles. Like, what is a good training for a marathon? Well, you want to find like a program that you're going to follow. Uh, you really have to start up pretty slow, especially if your goal is a marathon. You don't want to burn out um, in, you know, the first few weeks because training will last months. So you're really going to want to find, even find a coach that will help you design a program for running so that you can work up your mileage that will really help you in your end goal of running a full marathon. How long do you train for, say, a half marathon like you've done? Half marathon, <laughs> the two I've done were both in the end of May, so basically once the snow melted. And um, I had trained probably for about four months each, um, which – is probably not enough. I felt like it wasn't enough when I did it. So, you know, you learn from your own mistakes and that way I can give a better advice and be like, you need to stick with training for, you know, a lot more, probably, you know, give yourself six months, especially if you're more of a beginner runner. Okay. So what is, so now that you've, what was your injury that you, you, you kind of, that you were recovering from? Um, and well, has, was, how has, Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I was 
diagnosed with Graves' disease. And so my ability to exercise really kind of went because my heart rate was always so high, just resting. So I couldn't even walk up two flights of stairs without being winded, which is really bad after coming wow. out of running. So that really put a damper on my running and I really want to get back into it, but I'm only just starting to get back to normal. So I'm really going to start getting into it. We have, we bought a puppy. So once <laughs> summer what comes kind of puppy? the snow melts and she's a bit bigger, we're going to start running. What kind of puppy? It's a Shiba Inu. I have no idea what that is, but I'm going to imagine that it is a either Adorable. one. It's a very big dog or a very small. Medium. Okay. <laughs> I basically adorable. know I know about six dog kinds, and that's about okay, maybe eight. And that's about it. <laughs> Chihuahua and poodle. Oh no, mostly just terriers, because for some reason oh. I just I love terriers, probably because uh, they have high amounts of energy. They're ferocious, loyal, um, and ridiculous. Like, ridiculously silly <laughs> and dumb, which is, like, it makes sense because I'm the same way. So I, I want a dog that's, so that's you're very much... you describing yourself, or... <laughs> 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 so I have no idea uh, what Graves' disease is. Can you, like, what what is it and how did you, like... How did you get diagnosed with it, and, and how have you recovered from it? Like, what what goes into into that? Well, it's a thyroid disease, and it's basically hyperthyroidism, where my thyroid is working more than it's supposed to. Graves' disease is just more of a specific name for it. Um, I went to the doctor because my heart rate was really high when I was resting, like when I, it first kind of started, and I just didn't feel right. So I went to my doctor and she was saying, oh, it might just be anxiety. And so we ran some blood work and then found out it was more than that. So I, we were kind of just going with the flow and just waiting to see if maybe it would kind of resolve itself. And then it just kept getting worse. So I had to be put on medication and now the medication has lowered it back down to a normal level. So now I'm pretty much almost back to normal. <laughs> so how does that, how did that like, did you, you, so you had to completely stop. You couldn't train at all. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Two flights of stairs and I was, my heart was pounding like I had ran. So I really, it really changed a lot of things for a while. How did you, so, you know, I, I've never, I've had it like a broken leg and, and, you know, well, not really a broken leg. So I had a cast. I don't, it wasn't a broken leg. I somehow stepped on a soccer ball with no, like playing barefoot and like sprained my ankle really, really badly. Um, so I've like, I've been in a cast and I've, I've had stuff on my arms and, you know, like I've been injured and had things that, that have kept me from like playing sports when I was younger. But how did you, how did you deal with that? Like emotionally, like to me, I, if the doctor was like, look, you can't lift for like a year. I don't like, I would probably come home with a bottle of Jack Daniels. Okay. No, a bottle of good scotch, not Jack Daniels. Um, and I would just want to sit there and like play call of duty and drink myself. Like I, I, I would be like, what, I, you know, I, I would feel this pit of despair kind of come over me. Like how, how did you deal with that emotionally? Um, well, it hasn't been that easy as, been up and downs, um, but there wasn't much I could do to start with, so I kind of just had to deal with it, and I kind of would, you know, try to keep moving, but, you know, walking at a quicker pace was, you know, kind of challenging, so I really just had to just deal with it and just take the advice from my doctor and just, you know, try not do something super evasive for like treatment. That's why we just went with medication and then it was just kind of hoping maybe to have it resolve on its own or at least not, you know, not surgery or anything right. crazy. Right. Right. Um, so what was it like? So now that you've kind of got back into it, how hard was that first day? <laughs> <sighs> oh, it's, it's a challenge. I feel like I'm starting from scratch again. <laughs> Um, fitness wise, my endurance has gone 
down a lot more, but we get out pretty regularly now with the puppy. So that's, you know, it actually kind of helps because we'll run with her a little bit and we do a lot more walking. So it's, it's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, have you, now have you still been able to work? Like, have you still been able to coach people one-on-one -on -one throughout this or was that, did that even take a lot out of you? you know, to, to kind of get to work and, and, and do the, you know, the, the daily grind? Um, I was still pretty able to do everything. I just couldn't be as involved in my one-on-ones. Um, I was able to teach and I do a lot of online coaching. So that really didn't affect that other than I had insomnia, but I could, I was working through that. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, I just, like that, you know, I've had a few people on who, who, who fought through cancer or who have, you know, uh, one of my other guests, Adam Duggan, had, had fought through like an eating disorder. But to fight through something like that, just, I guess to me, you, you, you it's almost, it's almost like life just kind of like slaps you in the face with a two by four. Cause you're like, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm moving. I'm grooving. You know, like I'm, I'm doing the things I'm supposed to do to stay healthy. And then all of a sudden your body is like, well, how do you like these apples? Yeah, exactly. So now <laughs> I'm kind of back to a beginner standpoint, which, you know, makes me kind of relatable to people because I know how hard it is to start, you know, over. And I like to teach and work with a lot of beginners in fitness. So when I'm kind of like, I'm a beginner too again, it's <laughs> like, I know how hard I can push. So I know how hard it is for you when you're starting. I, actually, that was oddly enough my next question. I was going to ask you uh, if if this struggle has kind of helped you as a coach to connect better to people that you know are you know out of shape or or are new to you know to working out. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have one group that I started that was for beginners, like strictly for beginners that needed a slower introduction back into fitness because you know, like there's a lot of programs and stuff that are just like, you know, four days a week of kind of intense stuff. And some people just can't keep up with that when they're starting, they need to have a lot slower introduction so that they can make it a routine and not, you know, not be able to walk for three days at a time. <laughs> that, that is, that is true. Um, I remember those, <laughs> those days when you're like, Oh, oh God, why last year, when I, uh, I did a, a program on photography, um, I did calf raises and I was like, really, really, you're good. You're going to give me calf raises. Like, come on. Like, this is the easiest thing in the world to do. Two days later, two days later. All right. The next day, fine walking. Oh, whatever. Yesterday's workout. I got up out of bed and <laughs> fell to my knees. Like my calves hurt that much. It, yep. it, it blew me away. Uh, That's like ooh. after running my both of my half marathons after right after I was like oh not too bad and then a couple hours of like laying down I couldn't move the next day was awful <laughs> you just cannot move for a couple days so you started out in nutrition and and moved over and in, over into fitness um yes. and you know being someone who does not fondly appreciate the art of running so much. <laughs> uh, see, I play lazy positions uh, in, in, in like sports. So in basketball, I uh, sat on the bench um, because I was small and I also like to foul a lot. So the coach was like, well, I can't have you in because you're going to be back on the bench in three minutes anyways. Um, and in baseball, I played catcher. So there wasn't really a lot of running. I just kind of squatted around and threw a ball back. Um, so I didn't really play a lot of sports that involved a lot of running. Um, so my diet, you know, for, for like lifting is usually, you know, like high protein, you know, carbs on, on workout days, um, you know, lower carbs on, uh, on rest days. But what is like, what does a diet for, for running look like? I mean, is it really high carb? Like, like how do you, how do you, like, what does your diet look like? Well, you, you will carb load before race just to fill those stores back up. Um, but you want to eat pretty 
clean, you know, your, your fruits and your vegetables and your healthy grains. Um, that's a lot of what I eat. Um, my brother actually got me like a vegetable spiralizer for Christmas. So I've been eating zucchini noodles oh with pasta sauce awesome. on it. <laughs> um, and with racing, you really want to stick to, you know, a pretty good diet so that when you're out on a long run, you don't get the runs, basically. So what are the runs? Are the runs sort of like the bends, like when you come up from a really deep dive? No, I said runs. Oh, the runs. Oh, I, th- I was like, the runs. <laughs> what is, is this like? You're like runners talk. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know the lingo. Like, I'm a, I'm a gym bro. Like, I don't, I don't know the running lingo. Uh, okay. Uh, so, what? I'm trying, I'm trying to think of, uh, of, of good questions here. Um, I had a couple written down, and uh, I've already kind of gotten through them. <laughs> um, so, what, what has been? What was your biggest besides? Um, you know, not being able to like get out and get upstairs. Was there another struggle through through Graves' disease that that you really struggled with more so than like not being able to move? Um, it was really mostly that, just because that was is my work is moving. So that really took a a harder hit than anything else. Um, my the rest of like my day to day life, it really didn't you know, affect it a whole lot. It kind of on the inside a little bit more I was struggling with it, but for the most part it really wasn't too bad. And so it's January now and I got diagnosed with it in like September. So it's not like I've been living with it for a really long time. So it hasn't been super damaging to my emotional being, I guess. Well that's that's I mean that's I, it's it's good to hear that you you are you're moving past it and that with only you know a few months you know that, that things are looking better. Um, I can only imagine that the longer you were suffering with it, uh, you know the, the the more toll it would take mentally. Like if, if for three or four months you literally couldn't walk five steps. Um, but that's 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 a positive thing. That's 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 good to hear. Um, yes, I'm trying ha- to be positive about it for the moment. <laughs> Have you? Keeps me sane. Right, right. So, so what are some to, like what are some things you've done to stay positive? Uh, you know, through throughout this, you know, so many people get told you get diagnosed with things, and, and like I said, if the doctor was like, "Look, you uh, you can't lift for a year because of this," I would probably want to drink myself into a drunken stupor. <laughs> I would wake up the next day and be like, "All right, life, let's go. We continue on. I, I can figure out something." Um, but at least for a little while, I would want to be in my own like puddle of pity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so like, what have you done to keep yourself up? What what tools um, or tricks do you do every day? Um, well, I try and get out and walk a bit more. Um, I just and trying to keep myself busy just by you know trying to eat eat better, um, and you know even just coaching people online and helping them through their issues and their things that they're going through um helping people you know is positive for me and so i kind of try and focus that energy on helping other people get through whatever they're dealing with whether it's just that they're a beginner in fitness or they're coming off an injury or they were diagnosed with something that had changed you know the way they have to do things okay so, 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 helping others throughout. So, see, like, I, that's that's good. You, you're doing positive, positive things to stay positive are helping other people. It's all right. <laughs> all right. So, so, some fun, some, uh, some fun questions. All right. So, when you were running, and let's say you're training for a half marathon, what, what was your like? What was the song that got you pumped before you started? As you're stretching, like, what song got you pumped and ready for the run? There's actually one song that I really like liked a lot when it when I was going to even running on the treadmill or when I was running outside. It was Michael Franti's um, "Love Invincible." 
Mm. I don't know what it is about the song, but it just, yeah, that one really pumps me up. Okay. Is there a song like right as you get right in the middle? And I've heard this from, from many people who run that, that there's a sensation like halfway through where you like hit a wall and you like mentally. So, so was, is it like as you're training and getting to that point, is there a song on your, on your list that you're like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to put this on boom, ACDC. Here we go. This is going to get me through it. Okay. This might sound really, um, Spice know. Girls. I knew it. Oh yeah. I love Spice Girls too, but I was going <laughs> to say Carly Rae Jepsen. Call me maybe. <laughs> um, guilty pleasure. I don't know. Um, Spice Girls. <laughs> I I have to say this. It's one of those songs where I'm like, I don't know why I'm listening to it, but damn it, if that Call Me Maybe just doesn't get stuck in your head. I know. Some, I, I don't I don't get it. Something something about it. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, so you totally so, understand. <laughs> oh. I mean, listen. I I will someday let listeners know the guilty pleasure on my on my on my list, and I'm sure many people will be like, "Oh, dude, that's not that's not." But but to me, it's 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 a big guilty pleasure. I'm kind of a music snob. I can't help it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, all right. So Carly Rae Jepsen, call call me maybe. You know, I actually I do have to say uh, I, when I did run for a little while just as a warm up. Um, I did put on, uh, oh God, what was that? What was that silly South Korean thing that everyone loved? Uh, I can't even remember it now. Style. Yes. Gangnam style. I would put that on my mix only with the thought of like, okay, here's my inspiration. I'm running away from this music. Like someone's chasing me with this music and that's why I'm running. And that's why I, I like every barrier I just kept pushing through because I'm like, no, I'm running away from this song, but it won't, es- I can't escape it. <laughs> Another way to do it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like to use my imagination sometimes. Um, cool. All right. Um, so who, who do you re- like? Who inspires you as as a trainer? So so you're young and, and you're you're in the business and you know who who do you look to for inspiration? Um, honestly, I think it would be well, it would be the old older Biggest Loser trainers, um, Jillian, Bob, and Dolvet. Jillian's not on the show anymore, but right. them those three. Honestly, I I look up to all three of them. And their approach to training and their approach to dealing with people, I really, I really like that. Okay, so I know you're a big you're a big fan of The Biggest Loser. So what, yeah. what, like what what about that show? What about it just hooks you? I guess it's just the way they're helping people, you know, find the right path in life and really just bettering themselves and getting healthy and just finding a passion for it where they didn't really know that they had a passion for it. Cause a lot of the people that were on the show, they open up, you know, like some type of yoga studios or some type of fitness classes. They really like find a passion for doing something like that once they've been helped. Okay. So let's say the producers come to you and they're like, listen, we, we found your site. We love you. You have a great story because you've, you fought through this disease. What, what would you like, what was your, what would your program look like if we were to see you on the biggest loser? <laughs> well, I like Jillian, but I probably wouldn't be as crazy. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Like it would be really intense because that's how you know how a lot of their workout workouts are um i feel like it would really show people's strengths rather than you know like they're gonna have a lot of weaknesses but they're gonna find the things that they like to do and kind of grow on the strengths of the things that they perform the best at kind of gives them a positive thing to go with rather than, you know, struggling with everything they're failing at kind of gives them some hope. 
<laughs> okay. So besides The Biggest Loser, what is your other favorite, like, re- d- your other favorite reality TV show? Or is that, like, the only sort of reality TV show you watch? That really is the only reality one. I watch, you know, like, The Walking Dead <laughs> and Game of Thrones, but of, not of course. any other reality shows. Okay. All right. Uh, that's that's good, I guess. My my wife is obs- my wife is obsessed with just like awful reality television. Uh, I either catch her watching Snapped, um, which is slightly terrifying that you're watching like women who go crazy and kill kill their husbands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just just a little weird, honey. Just a little weird. Um, or I catch her watching like uh, Rock of Love, and she's like, "I don't know why. I don't know why I love this show and the women who love Brett Michaels." Like, I, she just, she loves bad reality television. I don't know. <laughs> it helps that I only have two channels. Oh, so where, so where are you in in in, in Canada? In are you in like the middle Saskatchewan? Okay, so you are like further west. Yeah. Middle of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon as well. So I'm like in the middle of Canada in the middle of Saskatchewan. <laughs> <laughs> so how cold, cold is it there right now? <laughs> is it yeah, like... I only have two channels, so... Is, is it like 12 degrees it. right now? Is it that cold? It is. Well, I, don't, I go in Celsius. So oh, whatever. <laughs> it's minus... Probably about minus 10 Celsius right now, which is actually kind of warm. Oh, okay. All right. It's, lately, it's been minus 30. Woo! So, we got a little I, bit of a, a so, warm spell. I, so, I have to, so, so, this is just for, for my own personal benefit that I, that I got to ask. How do you, like, winter that cold? Because to me, like, I, like, I grew up in, in, the, in the South in America. Uh, not South America, but, um, uh, you know, and winters were somewhat mild. We would have snow. We would have some cold days, but nothing super crazy, ridiculously cold. But when those days did come, I got, like, for some reason, I just felt the cold, like, seep into my bones and my joints and my muscles, and it just it made me angry. And I felt like I felt like I realized, you know, now I know why the Vikings – like came down from like Norway and Sweden and Finland and just like pillaged Europe in the winter because it was cold and they were angry about it. Yes. <laughs> so how do you like, what do you do to deal with a cold? Like you just bundle up. Like, I, I don't know. Like how, how do you deal with six months of like that much cold? Oh, I guess I, 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 I should be used to it. I kind of am, but at the same time I hate it every day that it's cold. <laughs> But really, you just have to put on multiple and multiple, multiple layers. <laughs> like multiple. <laughs> and pretty much don't stay outside when it's minus 30 because you pretty much can't. And right. then my car never starts when it's cold, so I'm always boosting <laughs> it. And I'm always just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so for six months, it gets, it, gets, it gets a little rough. It gets a little tough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's my life <laughs> <laughs> well I have uh, I have been pouting about like 20 degrees but I, I will not pout any longer since I know that uh, others have it way worse than I do uh, yes I, <laughs> it bothers me sometimes when I see people complaining and it's like oh it's minus uh, and I'll I'll convert the Fahrenheit to Celsius so that I can see what it's like. And it's like they're complaining when it's minus 10 like it is right now. And I'm like, really? I'm like minus 30, so be quiet. And I'm still going outside and walking the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so a couple more questions uh, before we, we wrap up the podcast. So how did you, how did you uh, get into coaching with photography? How did you find out about, about photography? I think it was a Facebook ad, to be honest. And I kind of was looking into it and then I was looking around on the site and then I signed up as a coach. And then ever since then, it just, it's exactly what I was wanting to do. It's like I'm working from home and I'm helping people 
and I'm, the most of the people I've been helping actually are just doing their workouts at home. They're not quite comfortable with going into the gym setting, which when I was working at the gym, that's the only people I had. So they, I either have less people or they wouldn't show up as often because they're more intimidated. And so working online with photography has been awesome. Cool. Uh, do you have any classes that, uh, that are starting soon or uh, are you in the middle of one right now? I'm in the middle of two. I have a beginner one that is for people that are just new to fitness or getting back into fitness. So it's a little bit of the slower start. And then I have a, another one that's a little more like an intermediate that includes two dumbbells that you'll need. So if you, you people can do it at home. I think most of the ladies I have right now are doing it at home since two dumbbells are pretty easy, you know, to buy. Um, and then in February, I'm having two um, gym uh, programs starting where it uses, a, you're needing gym access. Okay, cool. Do you have any cool names for them? Uh, is it like barefoot and barbells, barefoot and dumbbells? <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been throwing uh, names around for for stuff with me in the future, and honestly, I just threw my hands up and was like, "Screw it." <laughs> no, I'm like I have um, blast the fat boot camp which has gone really good. I've done a previous one that ended in December. It was about two months long, and now I have this one that's about three months long. Um, it's going really well. And then I have, they're not super fun names. They're just kind of <laughs> basic to the point. <laughs> I, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, so, so just a, a couple more. Um, so what is, what is one thing that you've learned from a client um, that has really sort of like stuck with you over the years or maybe helped you become a better coach? Hmm. Um, I guess just appreciating um, a lot of the small steps in your journey when um, they're like, oh, I, can, I can never do push-ups um, without doing it on my knees and I can only do a couple and now I'm doing them regular and I can do 10 in a row it's just appreciating the little things that you you know take advantage of or you don't really think about day to day okay all right uh what is excuse me um so so just a couple a couple fun ones here to to wrap up the show um what is your favorite movie of all time dumb and dumber you know, I, I, I knew, I knew that you were a cool chick, but you just like jumped up to like super cool level. Um, Dumb and Dumber is quite possibly one of the best movies ever. Um, I am pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. Have you seen the sequel? I can't. Like, I no, can't do I it. Okay, because I saw, I watched like thirty minutes of Inkerman two, and I turned it off. I couldn't. So like, Dumb and well, Dumber I two. All of that. Oh, oh. It was pretty interesting, but I got I couldn't. through it. I, after the dance sequence, I was like, I can't do this. And then I watched Wolf of Wall Street, which is like three hours. I wish I could get back in my life. Um, <laughs> I've never watched that one. Oh, don't. Don't. Like, it. the premise is kind of cool because it seems like it's a movie that is written in the style of, like, someone's memoir, and you're, like, watching a bunch of scenes that he wrote in a memoir and then like he redeems himself in the end. But there's so many, like so many of the scenes I'm like, this really isn't needed. Like I don't need, like you don't need this for the point of the film, but all right, fine, whatever. Uh, you're Scorsese. You can do what you want. <laughs> uh, who? Oh man. I got it. Uh, I was I was gonna ask who was your favorite Canadian band, uh, and then I lost my my second one. The first one, of course, was gonna be Rush, but uh, I don't know why I lost who the second one was. <laughs> <laughs> I had it there for a second. Uh, so what is what is 
what is your summer like? What do you do for fun? Like, what like if when it's warm in Saskatchewan and it's not negative twenty degrees Celsius, um, you know, and and the summer is there. Like, what do you do for fun that is not just running, uh, you know, or training for a marathon? Um, me and my fiance go fishing. Um, we bought a small canoe two years ago, so we weekends we'll go and we'll go fishing all weekend. <laughs> and camping. So, so you guys just camp out and you enjoy the water and the peace and the quiet and get away from the hustle and bustle. Yeah, that is our perfect weekend. <laughs> that sounds like an amazing weekend. Uh, I want to do that myself. Not gonna lie. Um, except it is weird because like you think about camping and you're like, oh, I'll take my phone. No, wait a minute. What? Why is this here? No, this isn't camping. Exactly. We want to go camping with our friends. We'll play cards by, like, lantern light. So, <laughs> pretty fun. Cool. I don't know. I really like just to kind of disconnect and enjoy, you know, on the water, just even if we don't catch any fish, which happens a lot. But <laughs> Cool. So what is – so once you once you get back in into it and you, uh, you know, get back to, to being able to train – what is is there a goal? Is like is like is it Boston Marathon? Is it the New York Marathon? Like is there a marathon that is your ultimate goal that you want to achieve? Um, I think it would be fun to do a race or something in Disney. That would be like really like my ultimate goal because I would Disneyland be or Disney World. Um, Florida one. <laughs> so Disney World, okay. I only ask because I've only ever I'm been Canadian, to Disney. I don't World. know. <laughs> oh well, good point. Um, yeah, they're they're both very different. Like Disneyland was the first one, and then Disney World. It, yeah. Yeah, that would be fun to run anything there, even if it was a five k, because you get some really cool medals. Um, but really, I'll probably end up mostly just running the one in Saskatoon. Okay. Uh, just because it is local and you know cheaper to travel, <laughs> um, <laughs> they do qual. You can qualify for the Boston through Saskatoon's race, which is cool. But I never, I don't know if I could ever qualify. <laughs> Although that would be really cool to be able to do that. That would be like an ultimate goal. But so what? What does what does the time frame on that look like? Like, do you have to finish like a marathon and like? four hours to qualify for, like, a Boston? I don't remember what the times are, but there's a certain time for women in a certain age category that you have to meet, and it has to be, like, an official time. That's why hmm. certain races can be qualifying races. You can't just say, hey, I finished running this long, so you have to actually qualify. Did not know that. I thought people just signed up and were like, I'm going to run 26 miles. <laughs> I think there's a certain amount of people that can. Oh. <laughs> they, they do, I think, accept just regular, not qualified people. I'm not really sure exactly how it works. Gotcha. So if people want to know more about you, uh, where, can, where can they find you online? Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at a girl on the underscore run. Both names are on the... <laughs> They're the same, and then on Facebook, Barefoot and Fit Personal Training, and BarefootandFit.com. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so, 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 so much. Um, Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you so much, Allison, for coming on the show. You have um, <clears throat> a really inspiring story that you're going through this this crazy crazy ordeal, um, you know, with, with, uh, Graves disease that, uh, I had no, I, when you said it, I was like, I've never heard of, of this. Um, and it just, it's to be someone who's, who's achieved so much in his run half marathons and then to get this, um, but to find ways through coaching to, to remain positive and, and keep your spirits up, uh, and slowly move back in. It's that, that's a very, very inspiring story. Um, and I, I look forward to, to great things uh, from you on Fitocracy and, and through your clients. Um, but thank you so, so much for coming on. Awesome. Well, thank you.